God, she's bald. <laughs> Welcome back to the vlog, homies. I'm still in Copenhagen. Part one of the vlog was all about my trip with Ikea. Part two will be all about like my personal adventures here in Copenhagen. I'm actually on a bit of a time crunch because I'm headed out to dinner. I can't remember or think of the name of the restaurant that I'm going to. It's called like Based Beast Bost. If you watch part one, then you know I got sick, literally crying and throwing up. I want to eat foods today that I'm more familiar with, just so that my stomach can settle a bit more. I'm not doing too much on the makeup, just light brows, some skin, you know. I had to check out of my old hotel that Ikea was paying for because that hotel was like a little bit more expensive than what I wanted to pay to stay the rest of the weekend. So I checked into a new hotel. It's called the Alex Uzelman Hotel. It's in a really good location next to the train station. I didn't know if I was gonna be comfortable taking the train because claustrophobia, but turns out it's, it's pretty okay. I'm enjoying it so far. If I stop enjoying it, I will stop taking the train. Earlier today, I had an interview with, in the United States, there's this sort of idea that if you're not owning a home, or you haven't reached some ladder of success, you're, you're, you're just like not a person almost. And I just feel like that's just not true. And you can rent and feel good about yourself and feel safe and make your home feel beautiful and do all the things that you want to do. Ooh, don't know if I can actually say the publication that I interviewed with, but after that, maybe I went shopping. of like a couple of vintage stores that I wanted to go to before I even got here. I went to a new place called Funky Vintage, which I friggin' loved. The owner was super duper nice. I found these beautiful, gorgeous vintage glassware. He runs a, like a vintage market. He told me to pop by tomorrow because there's like 11 or so vintage sellers there. When I was like offered to go on this trip with Ikea, I had originally asked if I could bring a plus one. And part of it was because like I wanted to have fun with my friend in Europe. But then the other thing was that I am a very nervous person about solo traveling. You know, I'm a young woman, I'm black. I have anxiety, I have fears. I, I was scared. I've been to Europe before, not specifically Denmark, but I was afraid to do it by myself because I have never really come this far alone. So that kind of scared me. The good thing was that I was coming to Denmark, which has a reputation for being like very, very safe. All of the women who I've talked to who have come to Denmark, spent time in like Scandinavia, have all said how safe they felt traveling here. That made me a little bit more confident about coming here. But you know, I have anxiety. I have claustrophobia. So coming to Europe is like weird because y'all know y'all do them small elevators over here. This morning, I kind of had like a little bit of a panic attack because everybody who was from the Ikea part of the trip was leaving. I was like now for short in Denmark by myself. So that was kind of scary, but you know, I went out today, I got on the train. I don't know, I just felt really good about myself. I felt really confident. I felt like I was coming into my own. I was like strutting down the street. I was like, bop, 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 bop. I know how small your world can feel when you're scared and you have anxiety, but like, I promise you guys, like it is so fun out here. It's so exciting out here. It's so thrilling out here. Like you can have some really amazing experiences if you like pop a pill if you need it and like just take take that step. I want the homies to know that like it's okay to like do something scared. I am really getting more comfortable with the idea of not letting the fear of the thing stop me from doing the thing, but just do it scared. Do it anyway and be scared the whole time. I'm gonna call my Vigo, get ready to go to dinner. I'm wearing a pair of shorts, a tank top, this like flowy dress skirt thing, this bag. I got my chains hanging off the back. First dish of the night. Um, I thought I was ordering the 
prosciutto and mozzarella pizza, but they have a prosciutto and mozzarella dish. And so he thought I was ordering that, and I was like, I'm not, but guess what? I'll eat it. Mozzarella is made fresh every morning. They have a cheese room upstairs. This counter is so freaking high. Like, I feel like I'm like falling on top of it. Mm. Service here in Denmark is interesting. Mm. I don't ever want to like look at another country's customs and say like, based off of how we act in America, like they're being rude, because I think that's like very limiting. But just as like a frame of reference and understanding, the service here is very relaxed, paced. They're not up under you, on top of you. They're very like direct. They're very friendly when you interact and make jokes, but like nobody's like fighting you for conversation. I'll give you that. Hi. A margarita, right? Yeah. I was on the phone earlier with my aunt. She was like, so are there any black people there? And I was like, girl, there's like, there's like four of them. <laughs> like all black people, when you travel, you start to count the number of black people you see. <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of getting the bug for traveling by myself and going places by myself. Ooh, get back on here. Moment of truth. Yeah, that's good. This is basic, it's like a margarita pizza, but I have my side of prosciutto here. I'm just gonna eat it with that. I am trying to figure out what I want to do after this. There's a couple of like little bari type places that I want to try. So you guys not gonna be able to hear this, but I did end up deciding to go to another bar, and I decided to walk there because I wanted to just get like a feel for the city. I will say, even though I don't really know where I'm going. I have Google Maps. I know where I'm going. The streets are like pretty crowded. I feel very safe. I'm also a certified city girl. So, I don't know. I feel pretty good. I like it out here. I'm gonna keep walking. If I do start to feel uncomfortable, I'll just call a car, but I feel pretty good. vintage shopping in a foreign country is that I'll fall in love with something and then I have to figure out how to get it home because these right here those two they want to come home with me I like this that's 265 so this will be like basically $40 I do like it oh I want to go to this restaurant called Daza Grill it's about a 30 minute walk for like a 10 minute bike so I think I'm just gonna pick up a bike and right there. I hope I don't get hit by a car. I am in vintage Danish mid-century modern furniture heaven. Yesterday I went to a vintage store called Funky Vintage. Really great home decor, like home wares. My hands are so dry. <laughs> I'm talking to my camera. <laughs> I met him, he was super cool. We got to talking about what I do for a living and he was like, oh, you should come to this thing that we have. He was like, oh, you should come out here because we have this open house. Of course, I'll, I'll come to the, to the furniture spot. 
so cool in here. So he has this like whole separate warehouse in the back. He let me into. I feel I feel very cool, very exclusive. Um, but he's like one of the biggest like import exporters of like Danish furniture in uh, Copenhagen. And literally on like a dock. It's like a warehouse. I'm gonna try to get a better idea of like what the prices are like. Love these. <laughs> Especially this one. Mid-century modern is not necessarily my favorite style, but I do have a great appreciation for the for the style. But like some of the stuff is just drop dead gorgeous. Ooh, look at that. For a really good understanding, this teak bureau with the drop leaf mirror, it's 3,000 Danish krone, which is about $450, pretty on par with what something like this would cost in DC. Let me keep showing y'all some more. I didn't even look up. All of that stuff is up there. I didn't even see any of that. Do I need to pay my rent? I go to stuff like this and then I think to myself, what bills? Vacation me spends money like money's not real and money is real, but it's not right now. Um, I have an, a photo shoot coming up for my apartment. I need three more light fixtures for the house. And honestly, I haven't found anything that has excited me or made me happy, interest me at all. So while I'm here, I figured I might as well just buy a couple lamps. Packaging them up, kind of pretend just to get the weight and see how much it would be. Okay, I think I'm gonna do that one, including the shipping, looking at like $600. I know that seems like a lot, but the thing is, I've, I've, I've spent $600 on a light fixture before. So this feels like such a good price. Only cost that I'll have to add to that would be getting them rewired, which I'll probably hire someone else to do that because not an expert, don't want my house to blow up. A fair bit of packing. Fair bit of packing. Bigger, a bigger box. Bigger box. Yeah, so We're at 10. It'll be eight. Yeah, that's, that's, that's solid brass. Yeah, the this is. The rest of the stuff is uh, aluminum here. Yeah. Yes, it's like seven o'clock it's my last night in copenhagen today i was gonna go out and do all the touristy stuff but i woke up i was just freaking tired when you go to a foreign country or you travel there's this desire to push yourself to do every single thing in the world and like no matter how tired you are you know you know we gotta keep going because because we came here and i'm just like when i'm sleepy i'm going to bed when i'm tired i'm going to bed i can always come back to denmark i want to go to this seafood restaurant i think i like picked out some really good places I'll share all of those. The link to it will be like in the description. Going back to our earlier conversation about solo traveling, I'm kind of gonna stick up for what I said earlier. My fear in going places by myself is that I don't often know how my anxiety is gonna react to something. So what I was saying earlier about doing things scared really does stand up and it, it, it holds to be true. Because like, I could have just been like terrified this entire trip and allowed the anxiety and the fear to like keep me from having a good time, but I did it. For example, something that I realized is that like how bite, not, I don't wanna say how bites work here, but at some of the major intersections, there aren't yellow lights. Lights went from like red to green and then green to red. That wasn't everywhere. Like I did see yellow lights in like other places. And so I was getting a little bit worked up about riding bikes around the city. But I was like, no, I really want to ride a bike. I really just want to like 
be on a bicycle. Like I love biking in DC. I feel like I'm gonna love biking in Copenhagen. The first app that I downloaded was Donkey Republic because that is like their big bike share app here. I realized that they had Lime bikes and Lime bikes are like the same electrical bikes that we have in DC and they're usually the ones that I ride in DC. And so I was like, okay, if you want to do this, do it in the most comfortable way possible, which is mean like do it, do it in a way that you know. Having like the added benefit of it being like an electrical assist can like give me that extra like bit of confidence when I'm trying to like hurry up and get across the street. I could have left Copenhagen and like not done the biking thing in the way that I wanted to because if you read like when I was reading up about Copenhagen, people were talking about like, hey, like if you've never biked before or if you're not a competent bike rider, like Copenhagen is not the city to learn how to bike in. And I will for sure agree to that. I was biking at what is, you know, basically the like rush hour downtown busy city center. And I was like, there is a lot of fucking people here bikers were like cutting in front of me and they were like going this way and going that way and people bike really close together like i was in a huddle of maybe like 10 bikers and you really do just have to keep pace with everybody else um i will say like i do i felt very safe biking here but if you're not if you're not used to like taking your hand off to like throw a signal or like do a signal or whatever, I would not advise biking in this city. And the one thing I will say about Copenhagen that I don't like is my skin is so freaking dry. Like, look at my lips. Like, I put, I've like lathered myself in Aquaphor, and body oil and i swear to god i still wake up like dry as the fucking sahara like i'm dry as the sahara it is so dry here my skin is like falling apart i don't know this makeup is about to be the exact same as it was the other day i'm not gonna force y'all to sit here and watch that <laughs> sourdough bread with seaweed butter are these tiles? Oh, they're freaking like tiles. The bread selection in Copenhagen has been out of this world good. Like what y'all are doing with sourdough should be studied. <laughs> Oh, that's crack. I had something similar when Revelers Hour in DC first opened. Oh, there's that seaweed. It's really coming through. I love the color of it. It's like a pistachio, minty color. This dinner is gonna be more of a marathon than a sprint because I have, quote, ordered a lot of food, according to my server. <laughs> So buttery. This is such a cute little opener. I don't know. Wow. We have the lobsters been lightly poaching in butter. Mm -hmm. Then um, the first carrots of the season and some soil, some uh, soil, and then it's a pickled uh, walnut sauce. Underneath, there's a puree made out of herbs. All the herbs that we grow near the beach. I recommend cutting a piece and then just letting the sauce go all over. Yeah. Enjoy. Well done. Thank you. I'm about to fuck it up. I love when you go to restaurants and like the chefs run foods to the table. Oh, it's like a nice little touch point. Why do y'all not believe in like steak knives or like sharps? Like this is just like a fucking, this is a butter knife. This is a butter knife. He said, let this go all over. Carrots on top, first carrots of the season. That's crazy. Bright and citrusy, but also like distinctly nutty. It's basically like anybody with food allergies, this is like your worst nightmare. <laughs> Kick your mother and smack your brother. That shit is good. Also, the chef is very cute. Or very cute. That's neither here nor there, but 
It's good. I love mussels more than anything on God's green earth. Imagine being like the seafood. In, in terms of the amount of food coming out of there. Me neither. I mean, the. I, for me, it's, 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 it's great. We, we don't lose any of that attention to these things. Here's our chase. So we normally have here the, the glassware, especially the martini, and then you have the. Uh, the Can I... Are you guys buying all your eyes? We do, okay. yes. Well, why should I buy something when I can go to the expert? This is the final. Episode. So this is the final ginger, but up there is what, like day one? I can smell it from here. Yeah. When it comes to your, like the bottle cocktails that you all are selling here, mm -hmm. how long is that shelf stable for? For a lifetime. Oh, really? Yeah. Seriously. Because the difference is like we don't use any lime or lemon. Right. It's like a wine. In a sense, like you cap it, you put it in the fridge, it lasts for whatever time. Right. And, and I had a good laugh. And I <laughs>